hair later. He'll be in here. And we want to go ahead and get started. It's a little after five. First item is the discussion of the amendments to the retirement plan. And Chuck, I'm gonna let Chuck go off and talk on this. Please. Okay, Chuck. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, 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 Mr.
it's not something you have a choice about. It just has to be done. It's sort of a housekeeping thing. It has, has to be, be done, done by, by, the, December, by 41st, December 31. And then Patty Keesler, who we have worked with before on our amendments, sending them to the IRS, uh, will get that filed. We get to the million dollar question. All that can be changed in probably a couple of years. This all came down from the federal government. Right? Uh, well, because of that DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, you know, so the Supreme Court struck down certain provisions of DOMA. Right. And so uh, as a part of that, um, what happened is that pension funds, you know, they get caught up in a lot of this as well. So the, the, the aspects of this pension fund that are governed by federal law, which again is like the right to rollover is probably the most likely one to happen but anyway there are certain aspects of the plan that are governed by federal law not state they're governed by federal law so anywhere any aspect of the plan that's governed by federal law you know we've got to stay up to date with any changes i mean for example a few years back all plans like this had to be amended for uh, uh changes in the military laws requiring the plan to give a benefit accrual for military service after 1994, I think it was. But anyway, you know, so there, there have been other areas where the plan historically has had to be amended from time to time because we of changes in federal law. We just a few months ago for the transit system, which didn't pertain to us, but oh, now uh, if you have a transit have subsidy, you have to recognize right. that as part of compensation, which, you know, the plan has to say you will, even though you don't have transit subsidies. So. Let me be sure I understood. I heard you say something about the move to New York. Where they have same it's thing. not moved. If if they go under this rule, the way we have to adopt it, you could have somebody who's a resident citizen of Tifton, who works for the city. They have a same-sex partner, maybe. Uh -huh. They can't get married legally in the state of Georgia, obviously. Okay. That's okay. Good. But if they went off to New York, just took a trip to New York or and, California, and got married in New York, got married York. legally in one of those other states, we would have to recognize it here. Only certain parts of the Only plan. certain exactly. parts of the plan. Like, uh, the Georgia Federal, <coughs> federal excuse me, your, your Georgia income taxes, but they don't recognize. That's right. That, right. That's this right. is right. federal. It that's would right. it's just it's only okay. for the per, only for the parts of the plan that are controlled by federal law. I see. So it's almost like we're in this hybrid situation where for some purpose of the plan uh -huh. we would not recognize the same sex marriage. And I, I, I if the illustration of that would be with that hundred percent survivor benefit. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay. But for other purposes like the right to roll over, we would have to recognize it. The, the right to roll over only that five percent contribution the, the contra that they have been putting right. in that like right. our new plan right. provides for. Yeah. And it has, I mean this doesn't have any there's no cost to this. It's not it, it doesn't have any real practical impact to the plan. It's just that you you have to make sure that your plan language right. complies. It has to be filed with the IRS so that they can approve it, you know, and, and so the plan stays tax qualified. You know, so like I said, for the moment, and now, you know, again, a year or two from now, my guess is that's going to change, and for that 100% <coughs> survivor benefit, we probably will have to start. I'm I hope just I'm still here when you come back, it won't change. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just the messenger, I, you know, right. I, but but I mean it's it's you know it if that happens it's going to be what it's going to be and we just all have to live with it you know but sure. for the moment this is what we have to do. That's why we live in America. That's that's right. <laughs> Things like this. Happen yep. All right. So well, I understand. Anybody else got any questions? All right. We're going with the next one. Uh huh. The next one is an amendment to our flexible spending account. Um, beginning January 15, the IRS is permitting participants to carry over $500 of unused funds. Um, say, in 2015, I contribute uh, $2,500, which is the max. Um, I know at the beginning of 2016, I'm going to need $3,000 for a procedure, so I plan to only spend two thousand dollars of that in 2015 and then i can carry over 500. Um, this kind of goes again or or updates the use it or lose it plan um, where now of course if it's more than 500 and we rarely have anyone in that situation most people are down to nothing by mid-year um, our employees really like the flexible spending okay. um, but anyway this this will just allow our employees to carry over $500 of unused 
um, money funds. And so our, our what's called the cafeteria section 125 plan needs to be amended. Okay. So the resolution is to allow Larry to sign that agreement. That's to come into compliance with the bond care. Is that, that well, is the law? kind of. I mean, it doesn't have to do, it's just, you know, some things that are this. They have they've increased the limit on the health spending accounts um, to $6,550. And, you know, over the years, they've decreased the limit of the flexible spending. And so this kind of helps with the usual to lose it. You don't have to lose that much. Okay? Okay. Good with that. And Next. Any questions? Uh, item number three, group percent coal for eligible retirement. And this is just a standard what we have to do, you know, every year um, in December to provide for the 3% cost of living adjustment to eligible retirees as of January the 1st. Yeah, I wish y'all would call the state of Georgia and talk to them. I'm a state of Georgia retiree. They haven't given us colors in about five. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that coal increase is not mandatory. That's at our discretion. It is. It is. Yes. And it, I have one more question, if I may. The um, financial implications is this increase in payments of eight twenty five eighty five. I went. What I did was took our pension plan or the pension list, retiree list mm -hmm. uh, for December the first, mm -hmm. and looked at the ones that would get the three percent cola and added the three percent, and it's eight hundred twenty five dollars bottom line. Okay. For the and whole just, year increase. And just yeah, I mean, just yeah. so you're aware, um, when I come up with the city's contribution on the funding side, the actuarial side, I have already taken into account these future colas to the uh, to this eligible group. So it's this is not going to affect the funding of the plan, other than I guess if you didn't do it, then theoretically the funding would go down a little bit, maybe. But I mean, well, eight hundred twenty-five dollars yeah. is a whole lot. I mean, there's 156 people uh, retirees. There are 29 that are eligible, so that's why it's only $125. Okay. Thank y'all. Thank y'all very much. Okay. If I could break away just for a second, I'm what did you say this one? Oh, this for Dr. Bridges? Yes, sir. Am I supposed to read that's this? A no, sir. I just wanted to get all of you to sign that. Okay. To send it to I'll be you. passing this around while the meeting's going on. Uh, item number four is a discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to move number four right now. Five minutes. Uh, I don't want to break in line, but if you, I'll go if y'all want me. Five minutes. Okay. Can I, may I approach y'all and hand y'all something? Sure. Okay. Are you on, Mr. Eller? All right. I'm sorry. Here you go, Your Honor. Thank you, my Here you are. Your Honor number two. <laughs> nice to see you, John. So here you are, Judy B. Smith. I thank you all for letting me come and speak to you. Uh, I, I've been, we've been brainstorming. I had a meeting with Mediacom uh, about six days ago. We found out three or four things that maybe we didn't know, but we're getting a little bit smarter. Number one, we're coming up on our 30th year in broadcasting and TIP. We've been doing this 30 years. Uh, we also found out that we are the number one local channel on Mediacom. We, we, of course, that's pretty easy because I think we're the only channel that shows all local stuff, okay? So they might have you a little bit. Um, another thing that I wanted you all to know is that we are bigger than Fox and Albany. We have more homes than Fox and Albany. Right now, we're pumping our signal into about, probably about anywhere from 100 to 115,000 homes in the whole system. And another thing we're proud of, we are on plant now also, which gives us the broad spectrum and the full spectrum of Tifton, where Tifton is our number one concern. Uh, the other towns are important to us, but the beauty of the other towns, and we're in 19 other counties, the beauty of the other town is we get to send Tifton businesses into those counties and invite them to come and shop in Tifton, Georgia with our mom and pop stores and bigger stores 
and we all benefit from it through supplies, money, etc. You know where I'm coming from that. But anyhow, so why am I here today? I'm here for the first phase of a big thing that I want us to do. Number one, I want to invite each one of you, the council people and the mayor, and I, I, I'd even like for Larry to do one or anybody else you want to. I, there's no charge for it. I'd like to invite you to come on and invite people. I want, I want to do uh, maybe meet you downtown, film you, and let you speak from, from your heart and invite people to come to Tifton and shop in our stores in Tifton. And this is a warm and fuzzy thing that we just want to do for the community as a give back for supporting us for 30 years. And it basically would consist of, um, I'm Hayward Fowler. I've lived in Tifton my whole life. I'd like to invite everybody in the surrounding counties to come in and shop. We've got some wonderful stores and great places to eat, et cetera, et cetera. In your case, the mayor, council person, Julie Smith. I want to invite y'all to do this, and I want the county to do this. And we want to keep this running year-round, and we felt like Christmas was a good time to kick it off. Our approach this year is, and this is our slogan, what can we do to make it better in Tifton? And what we're trying to do, I think if we put money in people's pockets, we'd probably help them a pretty good bit. So we know, we also know this, we know that not every store in town is doing great. But we know that in these 100,000 homes out there, there are people that's got some money to spend and we want them to come to Tifton and shop. Uh, we, we believe that we're the largest and the biggest way with the most numbers to get the word out about Tifton. Uh, we're bigger, far bigger than the Gazette. And uh, we won't, we're not bigger than Channel 10, of course not. But you can afford you know, most people can afford to use us to advertise. And uh, we just thought it would be a great thing if y'all would agree to do it, to let the council come, and uh, I can meet you downtown. We'll schedule it in your schedule. We'll do it kind of impromptu. We want to rehearse. If you want to write something and be totally prepared, you can. But, you know, if you don't say anything but your name, and I'd like to invite you to come to Tifton and shop. We've got hundreds of stores or something like that. I'd love to have you, and I'd love to have you do that. And, and the idea, of course, is for us to be the shopping hub. And that, that's, that's why I'm here today. And on another note, we've got a whole bunch of other stuff, interesting, that's going to come up this year. As we come to our 30th, we, we're going to have a, a lot of fun with our 30th anniversary and end of the And And on one final note, because I know you all busy, I've seen the list. We found out something the other day that y'all may get a kick out of this, and I haven't figured out how to parlay it into anything. But uh, we found out that we are the number three most popular English-speaking channel in South America. I said South America, didn't I? In South America, we're number three in Peru, Venezuela, and Honduras. Now, how many people could see us in South America? They said we're, we broadcast from a satellite down there. They said uh, anywhere from three to ten million people. And is that big? That's pretty big, but there ain't no money in it. So it's like waving it, waving, you know, sticking your hand out the window of the car or going down the road signal and saying, hey, everybody, I'm in a car. <laughs> but uh, but our, our, my little hobby has turned into a monster and uh, a good one. And uh, we're still positive about Tifton. We still love the town. Um, I know we're in other towns, and we love those folks, too. Okay, oh, thank you. We love all those people, too, but... but we love to help the best, okay? And we know that, Hayward. We thank you very much. Have your person get in touch with me, and we will schedule, or you call me yourself, and we'll do this. I'm going to leave, but thank I have something i got to go film. Y'all have a nice night. Thank you. All of you. I am number four. The discussion thank you, Mayor. Mental Amendment. My uh, moral retail venture. Thank you, Mr. Burke Road. Yes, sir. We received, uh, and that was the one for tomorrow. We received an application for rezone for... 57.747 acres on the west side of Tiffin off of uh, Hunt Road. Um, we have reviewed it. Uh, we believe that from a standpoint for staff that it is recommended that we rezone this property. It is going from City of Tiffin Wholesale Light Industrial to City of Tiffin General Business. That is more conducive with that area. Um, it is also part of an ongoing development project for that area. Uh, we also sent this through to the uh, planning zone and it was unanimously approved. 
And uh, our recommendation is that it is that it be approved. Are there any questions related to that piece of property? This is the big track that's next to what used to be the um, I can't think of the plant. Forceman oh, plant. It's the big yeah, track north right. of uh, Hunt Road. It goes out to Carpenter also. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. It does include actually one small track out there I didn't right. mention. It's a little less than an acre, 0 0.98 acre out there that's that's big right. as but, but to uh, that road. That's that's a, between the Hunt Road and the old railroad bed right, right, right. there. That's right. Any questions? Good adventure. Any questions on that one? Okay. Yeah, Bert, I think you got the next one. Yes, sir. Uh, the next one, I'm not sure what order they are, but these next two are basically together. Receive an application for annexation uh, for 2.192 acres on parcel 0047C-022. And with that uh, concurring rezone and uh, for the same area, the annexation will be coming from the county into the city. It's 100% annexation. The zoning change, which I know I'm doing both at the same time, but the zoning change would be from Tiff County General Business to City of Tiffin General Business. This is a direct part of an ongoing development plan for that area. Okay. Any questions? Don't see any. Thank you, Bart. That was easy, wasn't it? Yes, sir. That's all I need. Okay, the next item, uh, Larry, is the discussion of the amendments to order providing for environmental regulation. Mayor, if I may, can I take number seven, number 21, and number 22 all at the same time, because they're all interconnected? Yes. <clears throat> As you know, we, uh, y'all approved at the last meeting the uh, solid waste agreement with the Government Environmental to take over the collection of our solid waste within the city limits of Tipton. We got looking at it, <clears throat> And uh, when we started looking at that and then tying it back to the solid waste ordinance, which is number 22 on your list uh, on the agenda this evening, we discovered that there were some discrepancies between what was said, said in the solid waste ordinance and the solid waste agreement with Golden Environmental. Now, the agreement with Golden Environmental is primarily its uh, definitions and clarifications. There is no substantial, substantive change in the agreement with Golden Environmental. The bottom line didn't change or anything, with one exception, and that was a typo on the uh, addendum A, and that was a re recycling rate for one time a month. It was $6 lower than what it was supposed to be, and we corrected that. All of these. Uh, Corrections and changes to the agreement have been gone over on two different occasions with Mr. Hobby, Mr. Wilmot, and Mr. Goldman. So we're all on the same sheet of music here. Uh, the 1513 is still 1513. It didn't change a bit. Okay. Uh, additionally, there were some changes. In, <clears throat> there were some things in the solid waste ordinance, which should have been in the environmental ordinance, which is number seven on the agenda. So when we started going over the solid waste agreement with Mr. Crow and Mr. Hobby, we discovered that there were things in the solid waste agreement or ordinance that needed to be in the environmental ordinance. So those, it was a domino effect. So we have corrected the solid waste ordinance and it agrees with the solid waste agreement with Golden Environmental. And we've taken the items out of the solid waste ordinance that should be environmental because there were COVID issues, i.e. Littering was the biggest one, uh, burning, and there was a couple other items in there that got moved over. But those changes have, been, have now been made to the environmental uh, ordinance, which is chapter 38 in the code of ordinances. So uh, we have given you some little light reading if you want to go through those. <clears throat> and I think the, the agreement's highlighted with the uh, def definitions that changed. There were actually some definitions in the solid waste ordinance that were for lack of a better word, these didn't make any sense for them to be in there, so they were taken out completely. And the new definitions for all of the, uh, that, that agree with the agreement and the ordinance are now in both of them. Do you have any questions about those three items? I just need, I'd like to bring up what I talked with Rob about today. <clears throat> in that um, section, under the environmental section, section 38, I think it is, mm -hmm. Rob? Yes. Uh, um, 
Okay. You want to talk about that? About, about or you want me to talk, mention that? Or go ahead and mention okay. it, and I'll pull it up. Um, section 38 in the environmental uh, part of this ordinance, section 38-233, deals with maintenance of property and sweeping litter into the streets. And section B of that section says no person shall sweep into or deposit into any street, sidewalk, accumulation of litter, da 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 da. Um, I'd like for us to also add that it not only not be allowed to go into the street, but to adjoining properties. I get a lot of complaints from people saying, you know, the XYZ yard company came and they blew all their debris into my yard or, or that kind of thing. So that just that one little addition of, of just making sure that that law of debris is not blown into adjoining properties that do not belong to the person whose property is actually being cleaned up. And if, if when y'all read through these, the ordinances, the solid waste and environmental issues, find anything in there that you would like for us to address or change like Julie just did or whatever if you'll just email that information to me we'll, I get it to Rob and we'll need to do that before today before the Go December 1st meeting okay All right. and I'm really glad about section 38 234 because we get a lot of complaints about that too that's the one about being able to throw things out in people's yards shoppers and mm -hmm. They accumulated vacant, vacant properties, and I'm really glad that's there. So, so that doesn't include shoppers. You can a, a, a shopper, you know, a multi-page document can be delivered, or thrown out at your residence. Uh, but if you don't want the shopper, and you call the shopper, you tell them don't throw that stuff at my house, then they can't throw it at your house. Anymore. Well, I'll be can't add something there for that? Motion. I get a lot of complaints about this. I'll pick them right up for the garbage can. No, that, it's, it's there. It is there. It's what you're saying. Yeah, if you call them. If you call them and say, don't throw, throw it in my can. yard anymore, they can't throw it in your yard anymore. But right. if you if you don't call them, they can. Section okay. B says they can put it in your yard. Yeah. Section C says if you call them and say you don't want it in your yard, <clears> then they can't put it in your yard. Yeah, okay. We, we all I get a lot. That here. I yeah. just saw the yeah. 234. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's a good thing. All right. And that took care of 7, 22, 21, right? Yes, sir. We're going to move on now to Section 8, discussion of the bank replacement proposal for G5 refinancing. Let's move up. And Lois, that might have been some of the information you gave us. Is that correct? Uh, no, I gave you, um, hold on just a second, sorry. Didn't turn my phones off. <laughs> um, I gave you a, a quarterly financial report for fiscal year 15 ended September 30th. That's the item Just for your review. And, uh, yes. No, if no, you sir. have any questions or anything related to that, once you review it, we will. Uh, I'm on number eight here. Just you're on number eight. eight. The handout that Lewis gave you was the financial update. Yeah. The first quarter of fiscal year 15. Okay. Okay, that was the overview of that. What she's going to talk to you now about is GFA refinancing of the GFA loans. Right. Okay. Okay. I got ready for me before I expected you to. Okay. <laughs> um, what you have before you is a, a notification of the bank, bank placement proposal for GEFA refinancing. And I just wanted to give you a little background on it. Um, as you know, you know, for the past uh, couple of years, we have been working on reducing the debt, you know, for the city of Tiffin and uh, refinancing where possible in order to lower the interest rate and, and that, um, and looking at all the possibilities uh, that's available to us. Uh, in May of 14, we refinanced the GFA 2, or we didn't refinance it, we paid off the GFA 2 from some um, small score dollars that we had available uh, and uh, saved some $12,000. That was not a large loan, but it was like about a $222,000 loan that we were able to pay off with the uh, squats four dollars that we had available. So that was one of the things. But we also had uh, two other GFA loans, a GFA 3 and a GFA 4 loan that was taken out in fiscal year 2000 and 2011. And they were uh, with an interest rate of 2000 was at a, with an interest rate of 5.05% interest rate, and the 11 was at a 3% interest rate. Uh, one of them was, and they were both financed for a long period of time, 20 years. One of them was 10 years, and one of them was 20 years. 
So what we've been doing over the past several months is, um, first of all, we look for our financial advisor to help us with what would, what would be the best way to refinance these, these loans. So we've been working with uh, Stephen Incorpor Inc Incorporated, uh, Bill Johnson, he's a financial advisor, and um, <clears throat> we looked at various possibilities, including uh, discussions with GIFA to see if they would actually lower the interest rate or either refinance for us, and that wasn't in their policy. Uh, and then we started looking at the market to see how the interest rate was uh, fluctuating over the past year. And of course, as you know, it went down, it went up, you know, it's, it's been fluctuated. We feel like it was time for us to go ahead and take action with uh, the interest rates as they are right now. And so we um, sent out 21 bank proposals to ask them to give us a, uh, a bid on, on the refinancing of uh, both of these loans. And um, this agenda item, this notification that those bids went out, we're supposed to receive them back in tomorrow. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, they will come in lower than the 2.220 projection that we, we had on the agenda item. Um, we current, the current outstanding debt is 3.3 million. We're projecting the new debt to be three, a little over 3 million with a savings of 285,000. So we're, um, we're hoping it'll come in a little bit lower than the 2.20. That is a rate that a surrounding community received on a recent similar bond issue. And uh, so we're hoping it's gonna come in a little bit lower than that. But if we get the 2.20, then uh, that's what our savings are calculated on. Good. But we'll know tomorrow. We'll um, have a resolution for you on the um, first. And uh, if if we receive you know the bids back and they're awarded, we we have a, a good result. And then of course the closing will be December the 18th, uh, if everything goes as planned. Right. Didn't, it, didn't that also reduce the length of the loan by eight years? Yes, it did. There was one of the loans that was refinanced up to 30, 2032, and it reduces that loan to a 10-year loan. And it also has an option in the bond issue that we can call it within five years if, if we want to. So it has a callable issue. Callable that's, that would be payable any time. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's great. Good news, Lois. Thank any, you. Any questions y'all might have? Thank you. Stay with that, Mike. <coughs> Item number nine is discussion of orders providing for disposal of surplus property. Mr. Larry Wright. There you may recall, um, several years ago, <coughs> city council gave the city manager the uh, latitude to surplus property up to $30,000 a day. Mm -hmm. Well, when we did a resolution, or the ordinance of what we found the city manager to do that. <clears throat> uh, basically, it says that we could just, the city manager could, manager could just basically kind of get rid of it however we wanted to. And we've been using gov deals to do these things. Well, come to find out when we started digging into it, there's a, a Georgia law out there that says that you have to follow certain procedures. Basically, it says that if you're a municipality that's going to surplus property, they have to do it the old way like they did when they sell property at the, at the courthouse steps. <clears throat> or seal bids. Or seal bid. Okay. Property owner, you can sell something under five hundred dollars without going through the advertisement, seal bids, or auction uh -huh. requirement. I'm sorry, there. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so what we've done is we re what Rob's done is he's rewritten the ordinance so that our ordinance complies with Georgia law, which basically says we have to go through the process to find the Georgia law. Uh, send it out for bids, sell bids, or sell it at the courthouse, auction it off, or whatever. And then, if it doesn't, if we don't get the highest value for that particular item, uh, then the manager can uh, dispose of it in the several different ways. They can salvage value, uh, sell it to the highest purchaser, or, or actually just junk it. So the ordinance is now correct. It's, we're in compliance with state law. And, uh, and that's what's before you tonight. Okay. Be on the agenda for December first. 
so we have a correct. For how many years did we do it the wrong way? <coughs> how many of y'all are getting locked up? Buddy? <laughs> All right, but I'm glad we found that that's important. Thank you, Larry. The resolution providing for new alcohol and beverage license. Uh, Ms. Rona, it looks like you got several of those right there in a row. Yes, sir. I have 11 resolutions. Yes, um, and I have what I'm going to do is break them down by new applications amended and why they're amended. Okay. okay. Um, all of these backgrounds came back completely clean with the exception of one. Uh, that's a new manager for um, the Hilton Garden and his was a reckless driving misdemeanor. Uh -huh. So I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to look at that too hard. Um, he's 25 years old. He's been oh. driving now for nine years, and that's that was the violation. So um, we're still recommending approval. Well, he so. drove a good stake in my plate there. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. So items, item number 10, <clears throat> number 11, and number 13, yeah. which is the local uh, is going to be where Verona's used to be. Uh, Handy Stop, you all know, is on 12th Street, and J and J Food Mart uh, on Tifton El Dorado. Those are all new applicants, all new owners of businesses. So the staff is recommending approval of those those three. Again, once again, the background came out good for them. Um, item number 14 is uh, Sun Mart. They're requesting an amended alcoholic beverage license. They are asking to delete their wine, their current wine license. So that's the reason they're on the agenda. Staff recommends approval of that one. Okay. Um, number 16 is A1 Foods. They're, they are asking to add wine to their alcohol license. Uh, background on Ms. Muzak was clean, so we're recommending approval of that one as well. Um, item number 15, excuse me, item number 12, number 15, 17, 18, and 19, and 20 are all changes in management. All of their backgrounds came back good. So we're recommending approval. And as far as I know, unless Buddy can tell you differently, I don't think we've had any issues with these folks. Okay. Was that quick enough for you? That was good and quick. Any questions for Ms. Rowan? Okay, sounds good. Well, that brings us on down to item number 23, the board report. Okay. Let me get to that real quick. We have the Keep Tooth Beautiful board with a couple of expirations coming out December the 31st. Um, in uh, Donna Carter and Jimmy Deal. I sent um, an email to each of those folks and asked them if they were interested in serving again that I would be presenting um, this to you all tonight. Donna Carter does want to be reappointed. I've not yet heard from Mr. Deal, but I will make sure that, you know, I'll go back, go back to him between now in the regular meeting where you will take action. So you can find out about that. Um, and also a reminder of the Zoning Board of Appeals. We have two uh, vacancy or two open spots. And we got an application from a gentleman by the name of Curtis Akins. He's in the uh, packet, his application, and he's interested in serving on the Board of Appeals. I think I met him the other day. You, ha you know him, he'd be an awesome board member. He would be. He's a retired yes. U.S. Navy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what board do you want to serve on? He wants to be on his own board. His own board of appeals. Board appeals. Yeah, yeah. Do you his, know him? His application is very uh, commendable. Hey there, Mr. Parrott. Hey. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> and that's my report. And I would like, would you all like me to put this on the agenda for December 1st for consideration? Everybody's playing. Everybody else has to put this on the agenda. Chris, we were just Which going over the application. We're on item 23, board report. Oh, okay. Let's <laughs> we'll just sit down and be ready to go, <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got to go back to item number 2 through 20. 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, I'll be We're all down to 23. Okay. And Ms. Ron was just asking if we didn't put that on there. We've got, uh, if you'll look behind tab 23, uh, well, your yeah, house on the yeah, computer, right. you'll see we've got a good applicant for the appeals board. And mm -hmm. she's also going to check on the, uh, uh, on the on the other board and see if Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Deal Jimmy. wants to remain on the Keep Tip Beautiful. Donna Carter does. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. it would be a real good uh, person to keep on there. Go check with Jimmy and let us know. Okay, Ms. Ron? Yes, sir. Is that that's it? That's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. Now we've got something that's going to interest us, mainly going to interest all of us big time, and the citizens big time. And that's item number 24, the discussion of City Hall's move to the mine. In fact, I talked about that on tea time today. Good. And I was asked, what are you going to do with the old building? And I said, we're going to sell it. <laughs> because Patrick got water who run us all out of the town, and we did he wants it all back on the tax tax road. Yeah. Tell us about the mine, Brother Larry. Well, before I get to the mine, let me just touch a few, <clears throat> set the stage here. As you know, Thanksgiving's coming up, and City Hall will be closed both Thursday and Friday. And also, Christmas is coming up, and City Hall's going to be closed Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. And then New Year's is coming up, and City Hall will be closed Thursday and Friday. That's right. Having said that, <clears throat> there's a, about three weeks or three-day weeks of there. Uh, and also, unless there is an absolute need for it, uh, because of everything that's going to be going on, if y'all it's okay with the council, we will not have a workshop in December. Is that okay? That's fine with me. <laughs> You'll get an argument from me. I don't know about anybody else. Okay. We're going to get, we, we yeah. get pretty <laughs> heavy tonight. But we're trying to yeah, we're pretty heavy. To just also, put on your calendars, December 16th at 6.30 p.m., at the conference center will be the city of Tiffany Christmas party. I did that, but Rona, you canceled it. No, sir, I didn't cancel. That is a I did. Tuesday. I can show it to you. Yeah, I canceled, but it came through again. Why did it do that? I didn't cancel it. I was thinking. I know, I was thinking like, what well, we're we'll we doing, canceling Christmas? Yeah, Rona had just talked about it earlier <laughs> today, and I said, wow, I was going to it. I control that from you all twice, so I wonder. Uh-uh, because I never accepted it. Because it got canceled before I could accept it. Exactly. Uh, it mine says wow. canceled. I don't see where mine got reached yet. <laughs> it could have been because it listed just department heads and the second one went out all employees. So, yeah, I sent one to one group and then sent one it to another group. canceled the original one because you Why? sent it twice. Yes, it's really good. Why did it do that, though? Because it was two, two separate groups. Mine is still canceled. It should have been just two emails. Well, anyway, anyway, it's it's okay. not canceled. Please, I didn't get that. Okay, so it is not canceled. I sent it to you too. Okay, so now, now the part. Now We've never invited an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Good reason. <laughs> that, that man's Mr. Mayor, you're, yes, you're proud, right. you're losing control. Yes, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. What we're going to do is we're also going to have ESG celebrate our Christmas with us as well. Excellent. And uh, so we get the old employees that were with us before, we get the current employees, and we're going to have all the retirees there. Excellent. So we're going to have a great Christmas dinner at the conference center. That is fantastic. Now, back to moving into the mine. Uh, December 8th, the final walkthrough on the first and uh, first floor and basement are scheduled. And I've, I've spoken with Mac, and he has agreed to allow us, provided we don't run into any problems, to allow us to start transitioning from the fire department back into City Hall. Uh, the plan, if I understand it correctly, and Ronald's going to jump in here and fix me if I get mess it up. Uh, we're going to move the second floor people in uh, at a given time. We'll work, we're going to meet with uh, ESG tomorrow, uh, Scott, and we're going to start figuring out what the time frame is going to be for this move to transition back into City Hall. But at some point in time, and I think it's the first, last week of December, is that correct? We're, the three-day week? We're going yes. to shut down. Yes. We're going to have to close request. City Hall because we're going to be moving customer service back over and to operate in two different locations. It's, it's impossible. Same thing we did when we moved out. Okay. So from between December 8th and January 1st, or 5th, the 5th, the 5th before, before the next council meeting is coming up in January, our plan is to at least be able to have the council meetings and have the second floor of the city hall. 
hopefully when we shut that whole thing down, we'll be able to plan this thing so that everybody that's supposed to be in City Hall will be back in City Hall. Does that make perfect sense? It makes perfect sense to us. Uh, so, yeah. Did I miss anything? Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. You can just shut down customer service. I know it's for a day. That seems like that might not be done on the weekend. I mean, it's Christmas, please. December 25th, you're saying December. When do y'all plan on doing that? The last, the last week of December? The last week of December leading up to New Year's Day. It's a three-day week. What our plan is, is to take one week and move a floor. Mm -hmm. The first week that we're able to do it, we'll, we're going to move the second floor. The next week we're going to move finance. And then the next week we're going to move customer service. Um, and customer service is the three-day week. I mean, stuff gets moved, it always... It's going to be a zoo. That's the next the time, time, no matter you're open, you're still close. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to do some things proactively, too. But, we, we, of course, we didn't want to do anything until we spoke to you tonight about it. But we will be putting up signs and making people as, as aware as possible that, you know, we will be close for those three days to get those folks set up over there. If anybody has any problems, like if something gets cut off or anything like that, we'll go back and, you know, basically give an amnesty for those days. We're not we're going not... to do any cutoff or anything like that okay. during that time. Good. We're just not going to do it. So we'll look out. We'll look out for everybody. And if, if any of the city council is bored, they don't have anything to do. Mr. Barrett's already volunteered. Yeah, Larry's already signed me up. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on Roland's team. It's worth it for me, too. <laughs> But that's uh, basically the game plan for City Hall move. Any questions? I, have, I do have one comment. Um, our RFP for, we do have to purchase some furniture, uh, like for the council chambers and things. RFP for that will go out tomorrow. Um, it'll be in the Gazette on Friday and Sunday. I do have three vendors who are interested in receiving it. I'll send it to them, you know, so we're going to get it out as much as we can. Good. I'm glad we're getting a new chair. Yeah. Arm broke. <laughs> yeah. We're going to miss We're this room right here. here. <laughs> no. We're going to miss this room right here. We've kind of gotten attached to it. No, it's good. Oh, what are attached to it? Well, we'll be happy to be back home. And, uh, miss that. Yeah. Beautiful place. Yeah. 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 Yeah.